Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profotech Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning complete WordPress development for beginners and in this video session guys, we are going to develop a simple plugin in WordPress and also if you are beginner to this channel guys, then please don't forget to subscribe and keep watching our previous video sessions of various playlists of Online Web Tutor. So the basic question comes in our mind guys that how and why we are making this tutorial because we have multiple playlists of making plugin development in WordPress in Online Web Tutor and if you find that this, this was the playlist that WordPress plugin development using boilerplate and this is in Hindi also we have developed in English as you can see and using core PHP concept we have another playlist of plugin development something like here so we have multiple playlists to develop a plugin so why we are making this tutorial right here that is because guys many requests actually I got from online web tutor is that I have submitted or we have submitted during these plugin developments using JavaScript or Ajax means if we have submitted any type of form data then actually you have seen all these videos then you find out that we have submitted all those data by using JavaScript and Ajax so in this video session guys actually I going to make the plugin and we will submit the form data using direct form submission okay on direct form submission no way to interact the JavaScript or Ajax in our plugin development okay so how can we achieve that so first of all go to editor and this is the folder that I have made called next plugin okay and the tasks that actually we are going to accomplish that make menus sub menus save data as well as sort data okay these are the steps that we are going to develop this simple plugin in WordPress okay and all the things we actually do by direct form submission instead of using JavaScript and Ajax request okay so basically this is the folder that I have made called next plugin which basically does not contains any files right now okay and also guys after this video session I will commit this code to this github repository called github.com slash OWT hub slash WP next plugin where actually you could find or you can download that code from here so just back to our editor and now let's go inside this next plugin folder and create a file and that is PHP and something called WP next plugin dot PHP okay this is the file that actually we are going to make and it contains the plugin introduction okay so first of all just get rid of that and just click on some another plugin to get copy of the just click on akasmit.php and copy the plugin introduction from here okay just I have copied from here close this and list I'm going to paste it here and this is the code okay so let me make some formatting okay and just get rid of that and let's say that online web tutor plugin version is something called 1.0.0 .0 and description that simple plugin shows the direct form submission okay and now the next thing is that plugin URI so just get rid of that and let's say that this is our called WP next plugin this is the name actually I have given okay anything you actually want to give your plugin name so just close that folder and now let's make closing PHP tag and inside that PHP tag first of all we have to define some constant actually we will use to this plugin development let's say that define and let's say that next plugin dir path okay and basically it contains called plugin dir path and the current file path okay this is so basically this constant contains the current directory path okay by the help of that actually we can attach any of the PHP files okay so just I'm going to make a folder inside our next plugin folder and something called views so basically this folder contains all of our views files okay now the next thing that we need to do is that we have to make the menus and sub menus for our plugin so just back to our editor and let's make that function let's say next menus development okay this is the simple function name attach with this function name called action hook add action and this is admin 
menus okay sorry it's menu copy this function name and give it as a second parameter okay now in this function we need to define the functions called add menu page basically this is a wordpress function used to define the menu at our administrator panel these are the menus as you can see posts media pages comments these are called menus otherwise these are called sub menus like all post add new categories these are called all sub menus of this menu section okay so now first parameter that we have to pass called page title and this is something called next plugin okay and now the second one is the menu title let's pass again next plugin and third is the manage options that is administrator label okay next is the plugin slug so let's say that next plugin this is the slug that actually we are going to define for our plugin okay and now finally the last parameter called callback function so let's say that next WP something law list call okay so this is the callback function while clicking on this menu will be redirected to this function okay so just copy this function name go inside and let's say that function and this is so let's define for now let's say echo this is menu section okay so this is the function we have attached with this plugin so just save this file go to browser and refresh that page and as you can see just go to plugin section first we have to install and activate our plugin and this is the plugin that we have made just click on activate button after activating we can see that actually guys the menu section didn't appear so just back to our editor and let me check that so these are the parameters that we have passed add menu page page title menu title that is that is capability and the next okay guys this is manage options okay so just save this file again refresh that page and as you can see that next plugin is now appearing into our menus tabs okay so if I click on that this is our callback function running okay this is menu section so now what we have to do next we have to make the sub menu sections successfully we have the make menus so now we have to make sub menus of that menu section so just back to our editor and let's define another function called add sub menu page this is another wordpress function we are going to use first parameter we should pass called the parent slug and this is the parent slug because this is the menu tab okay so let's pass that again the next parameter something called the page title so let's say that list students okay this is the menu tag actually we are going to make and next let's say page menu title so again let's pass list students next we have to pass the capability that is manage options okay next parameter that we have to pass the menu slug okay so right now I'm just copying this menu slug of that parent and just I'm going to paste inside the sec first sub menu okay and the callback function same I am going to copy of the menu tab and pasting inside the first sub menu as well okay so if I save this file if I save this file go to browser refresh that page now we can see that the sub menu section didn't appear okay wait a minute just I'm going to copy this line again and pasting it here and let's say that add a student okay add a student as well so it's add a student just remove as from here WP next add okay this is the menu slug sorry sub menu slug and this is called add call okay so just copy this function because this is the callback function we need to define and let's define that function this is the function name and let's say that echo this is add function okay so if I save this file go to browser refresh that page so once we hover as you can see we have now two sub menus of this menu tag called list students as well as add student so successfully if we click on this menu tab the first function will fire okay again we are going to click on the add student and this is the second function callback function will actually fired so just back to editor 
and let's make some of the views files for these function calls okay so just inside view file let's say that add student.php and the next file that I'm going to make called list student dot php okay add a student basically contains a forms which for saves some data to our database table okay so let's define a form form tag and let's inside this tag let's say that name and within this paragraph tag let's define called name text and let's say that name equal to txt name okay and placeholder something called inter name okay so just I'm going to copy this paragraph tag paste it here and it says for email address as well okay so let's say that txt email it should be email okay email the input type email and let's pass inter email okay so this these are the two paragraphs that we have made inside this form tag okay and now finally we have to make the submit button so let's say that button let's say that submit and it should be something called type equal to submit and let's say that name equal to btn submit okay so if we click on this button we want to save this form directly by form submission ways instead of using javascript ways or ajax handling that we had seen in our previous playlist okay we are going to submit this form in direct way so just go to form tag and let's say that inside this action just we have to write php tag and let's say that echo it's server variable and we have to pass called php self because we are going to pass this data and we are going to save this data from this page okay so just save this file and now we have to write the method section that is post okay so just I'm going to write the PHP code to save this data to our database table so let's say that first of all we have to define the global variable or the global object that is WPDB by the help of this object we are going to save this data to our database table okay so let's say that if it set something called post and this is btn submit so just copy the name of this button name value of this button and now let's pass that and uh, let's say if it is set now just we have to write print r for now just to test our form data let's pass another variable and this is blank for now and uh, let's say that message equal to and let's see that form data saved for successfully okay we are going to show this message right here so let's say that within this paragraph tag within php tag and let's say that echo message okay so what we have did so far we have made a simple HTML form in which we have made two input elements called name and the email and finally we are going to submit this form by the click event of this submit button okay on clicking on this button by getting the post request of that button actually we have outputted all the request variables okay so just save this file go to browser refresh that page nothing appeared so just back to our editor let's check that and I think that actually we didn't attach that file with this function call okay so let's say that include once and this is the constant that we have made to attach the path of the directory okay so just paste it here and inside let's go views folder views and then add student okay this is the file that we have attached so if we save this file go to browser refresh that page this is the form okay so let's make some zoom okay now if we'll write something called Sanjay and Sanjay at gmail.com let's click on submit okay nothing will appear and this is because guys actually we have submitted that form successfully but the main reason is that PHP self PHP self this is a server variable gives the path of this URL okay so what we have to next pass we have to pass the page attribute as well so just make copy of that after copy just back to our editor and we have to write 
this is something like that this is the root URL that we got by the PHP self URL and we have to attach p is equal to WP next add this is the slug that we have passed while making main news okay so just save again go to browser refresh that page okay and let's pass called Sanjay and let's say Sanjay at gmail.com just click on submit and as you can see these are the values that we are getting inside an array as well as we are getting the message called form data saved successfully okay so just back to our database let's make and this is the database so first of all we have to make a database so let's say WP and this is next plugin TBL okay it contains let's say three fields for now just click on go let's say ID name and the email section okay so basically it's a varchar type it should be varchar it's contains 255 255 as well and the for ID value it should be auto incremented and because it should be primary key so just and click on save button okay table has made successfully as you can see if I click on browse so right now we have no data inside this table okay so we have to save those data actually we are getting from this form to this table okay so just copy this table name go to editor and let's say that instead of getting message let's say that WPDB insert within this insert let's say that first parameter we should pass the table name okay so the table name something like that WP next plugin TBL this is the table name and now in the second parameter we have to pass the array which basically contains the key value pairs of the column names so let's pass name and let's say name again just let's say post and this is the txt name because inside txt name variable we are getting the value okay so just copy txt name paste inside that and for the email section txt email is responsible for that so now let's say email post and this is the email section okay so successfully we have written we have actually wrote the code for the insertion of these data actually we are getting from the post variables from this form okay and now we are going to save this data to this table okay so after saving those data actually the WordPress returns the last ID that is insert ID okay so now just I'm going to wrap this with an if condition so if insert ID is greater than 0 means our data successfully saved inside that table okay so now in that specific condition we have to assign called form data saved successfully inside this message variable otherwise let's say that message form data or else let's say failed to save data okay so now this is the code that we have written for the direct submission of the form data to our database table okay we have actually accessed all the values from this post variable and we step by step we actually get all the values of txt name and txt name with the corresponding key values we have saved to this table okay so if we save this file go to browser again refresh that page let's say that Sanjay and Sanjay again just click on submit now form data saved successfully if you go to table just refresh that page and now we got the data again back to our add student page just refresh that page and let's say that Rohit Rohit 1001 at gmail.com something dummy email value just click on submit button and now successfully we have saved the second data into this table okay so this is the way guys that how can we save the form data in our plugin from the form direct submission okay instead of using the Ajax as well as JavaScript event handling events so what we did so far if we go to our task list so save data already we have done these three tasks now the final task is that we have to list all we have to show all the data actually we have saved into this table to our front end section okay inside this list student section okay so just back to our editor go to WP next plugin and now just copy this path URL and inside this function just we have to give the path to let's say list student okay this is the file basically responsible to list all the students that we have saved okay just open up and let's say that inside this PHP tag we have to define 
global WPDB again. By the help of WPDB, let's say WPDB, get results. Inside that, let's say WPDB, prepare method. All these methods, guys, actually we have discussed in deep in our previous playlist of plugin development. Okay, so if you haven't seen those video session, guys, then I strongly suggest to watch those videos to get the complete concept about these methods as well as about this object. Okay, so let's see that. Select a strix from and finally the table name. Table name is something like WP Next Plugin TBL. Okay, so just paste it here. Okay paste here and now in the second parameter we have to pass the null value for the prepare statement as well okay and then output result is something like associative array okay so just let's say that all students okay finally actually all we student we got inside this variable we will get all the students of this listing in the format of associative array in this variable okay so just copy all the students and let's say that if count all students greater than zero means we have more than one student in our database table okay means we have some student so let's say that by using for each loop by using for each loop let's say for each so just get rid of that so let's say that all students as index and a student individual student okay so we have to show all these records to the table okay so if we are going to copy this variable print let's use print r to print the values and to make the format let's say echo pre tag so if we save this file refresh that page just click on list students and these are the two students actually we have saved okay so successfully we have to iterate over these list and print those students into a table structure okay so just I'm going to define a table inside this for each okay so let's say that table tag and let's say that table closing here so this is the table that we have made inside this table we have to iterate all the datas all the datas of each students correspondingly okay so successfully let's say that and after table let's say that within this tr element we have to define called t head let's say that serial number in the second th let's say that name and in the third th let's say email okay so successfully just go inside this for each let's say again tr inside this first td we need to pass the serial number okay so first let's define count equal to one okay just go the first db td and let's say echo count plus plus it should be auto incremented after getting each student's step by step okay in the second td we need to pass called the student name okay so within PHP tag let's say that echo student and this is an array as you can see so by the help of this key just copy the name key and paste it here okay again copy this paste it here and let's say that email because email is the key for the email section okay so if we save this file go to browser refresh that page and now as you can see this are the students list okay so just make some formatting go inside table and just need to pass called cell padding this is the attribute of table so let's say that 10 pixel so it's 10 and now as you can see and also let's say border equal to 1 save this file now as you can see that we have made a table structure where we have saved two student details okay so again I'm going to add a student let's say that Rahul rahul at gmail.com click on submit again go to list students and this is rahul okay so successfully guys we have seen that how can we develop a plugin in simple way by the direct form submission 
okay where actually we didn't use any type of javascript or any type of ajax handling to submit our form we have submitted our form in simple ways as you can see also we have listed all the students to this page okay so all the tasks that actually we had seen before this video session guys we have completed all these tasks called make menus sub menus save data and show data and also guys i would like to say that if anything is new to you then please watch our previous playlist videos to get the clear concept about each of the function individually because we didn't discuss about add menu page add sub menu page and many more things so to make the clear understanding of these wordpress function please watch our previous video sessions of these playlist under the plugin development to get the clear concept about the javascript functions as well as the javascript object that we have seen something called wpdb as well as the wordpress methods called get results prepare and about the indices called array index okay so each of these things guys we have discussed in deep in those tutorials okay so in this video session guys if you have any doubt then just drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching have a great day